I know I'm I'm sure that I am wrong. But the lights kind of Okay guys, so for um for fifteen we had a canine, right? I think uh actually almost everyone said coyote on it. Um but there's some there was some uh, discussion or that I think we need to have up between coyote and domestic dog. And actually I might have a domestic yeah, dog drawing yeah. here. I'm my own worst enemy today. Uh, I'm my own worst enemy every day. <laughs> um, Alright, so here, um, here's the domestic dog track. They obviously vary dramatically, right? So some some are uh, are real tiny. I mean, they can be tiny and they can be enormous. But in general, a couple of trends with domestic dogs are blunt claws, uh, a heel pad tends to be short and squat, so so short and wide, rather than on a on a coyote, the heel pad tends to be long and, and thin. Um, the toes tend to be blocky or round and real bulky, uh, whereas in, in coyotes they tend to be a little bit more uh, teardrop shaped. Jonah, would you say that heel pad thing about front and hind feet? Uh, you know, I'm I'm mainly thinking about it with front feet because you get more. You get more of the pad registering, yeah. You know. um, and actually, it's kind of the hind foot of a domestic dog track will often look more like a coyote track than the front feet. You know, the front feet are kind of like even block, even bigger and wider and more splayed and stuff. The other thing is, um, is domestic dogs tend to have their, their heel pad tends to be larger proportionally in the track, and they tend to put more weight on their heel pad. Like they tend to walk more flat footed than wild canines, uh, like coyotes that tend to have even more weight up in their toes. So there's a little bit more of an angle there. There's a whole lot of little details you look for. Honestly, you get to a point you're kind of like, okay, I think I'm starting to get that gestalt, that coyote look that's, um, that's clicking. There can be domestic dogs that look very, very similar to coyote. Um, I felt when I looked at these that every that they fit perfectly for for coyote tracks, and um, you know the size, the size was right in the range of a coyote. The um, the claws are pretty thin, you know, and, and this is deep substrate. But like, look on this hind foot, right here's the hind foot. Mm -hmm. Notice how tight in the outer toes are. They're almost tucked. They're tucked in real tight, and there's no claw marks that are real visible, really visible from those outer toes. And that's really classic for coyotes versus dogs. These outer toes are really um, big. Is, um, is it the coyotes where you say you can pull the pads into the, I mean, the, the digital pads into the pack? That, no, that was like a bobcat or a cat, like how you, how you can fit like a bunch of the toes into the pad. So, um, so here, here's the, that coyote hind foot. See how tight in these back toes, those outer toes are? They're just pulled real tight in there. Um, you can make a nice X through the track. I mean, everything's fitting well for coyotes. And isn't it true too with a domestic dog, they'd be a little bit more sporadic with their gait and walk. They're not near it. They don't have a tendency to be straight behind it. You know, there is, there, that, and that's something that I hear a lot, but off, honestly, like I struggle with that one in an application because coyotes do an overstep walk a lot and an overstep walk looks really sporadic and messy and so there is that like sort of caveat where if it's doing an overstep walk and it's kind of zigzagging around look at just looking at stuff it looks like this real messy gate and that can screw people up a lot and so um but but it, as a general rule i think that that is something that, that, that people cue in on I'll, I'll see it in a in an in the whole trail so not just this short section like this wouldn't be enough for it but the whole trail i mean following it for 100 yards 300 yards is the coyotes other than playing and, and that kind of thing they tend to be much more efficient in the it's like elegant yeah. it's like an elegant trail i would say so like so i live in a place here in austin where there's tons of people who walk their dogs and they're not chihuahuas right it's all everyone's got their big dogs where the coyotes are running it's so it seems like the dogs are sloppy heavy walkers and then you can really tell the coyote because it's just, go home it's just they get to go home and eat that's elegant what, or something that's yeah. what it comes down to is it just yeah. it's just uh, uh energy efficiency conservation of yeah. of calories yeah. uh okay so uh so we also talked about gait mm -hmm. and foot um 
is, so there's two tracks here, right? And, and it's pointing to the larger of the two tracks, right? So what's bigger, front or hind feet? Or front, front. front feet, okay, so we got that part, right? There's two tracks here. Right here, it's hard to tell if there's one or two tracks, right? You look there and you're like, hmm, not seeing much, but okay, let's, let's, let's go along with that for now. But so there's two tracks there, then one, maybe two here. Up here, there's two. Up here, it actually, it's, it's, it's two. And then up here, it's two. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, because there's two everywhere else, that there are actually two tracks showing up right here. It was just a direct register or something got messed up because of the circle there and, um, and we can't see it. So folks following along with that. So, so I would say two, 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 two. Is that a consistent pattern? Or is, yeah, so it's a nice consistent pattern all the way down. So body scissor or leg scissor? Leg scissor. Leg scissor, leg scissor right. So that puts you into the walk or trot category. What if you put direct register, walk to run? Well... Because I didn't see that. Yeah. Well, well yeah, let's, let's get so there. Let's like get walk, there. then to run. Right. Well, well, let's work our way there. So um, so we had um, so two tracks there, two here, two here, two here. So we know we're at leg scissor. Then the next question is, if you're in leg scissor, it's either a walk or a trot. Right? And... Um, and so because it's direct registering, we can do that trick that you go where, where one foot touches the ground to the next place that same foot touches the ground, which is here, right? Mm -hmm. And if that's a walk, that will be roughly hip to shoulder distance, right? Is that hip to shoulder distance in a coyote? No. Nope. No. I mean, the, the, it's, it's way long. Hip to shoulder distance in a coyote is going to be like that. Because remember, we're not talking nose to rump. Uh, we're talking hip to shoulder and so from here all the way to here is way longer than hip to shoulder um, in a coyote and so that puts us into uh, a direct register trot uh, range and that puts us out of the range of the walks um, and so regarding the foot you can you can tell pretty easily by sort of looking back at the trail and seeing kind of the zigzag pattern right so we have a right, left, right, left, right. So I call that a right front, I believe. Yeah. Where's the other right? There's your right. There's right. Yeah, left. Here's, Wait. these are right. Yeah. Here's left. Right. 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 Now, um, John, I was having a hard time yeah. on the deciding whether it's right or okay. left. Yeah. Because it's, it's just, since, since it is such a beautiful single track yeah. trail, and I was having a really hard time finding some sort of a, you know, this line. The center line, yeah. The center line. Mm -hmm. How, what would you suggest? Yeah, so there actually, you can look at the feet themselves, and there's a lot of stuff there. So first of all, uh, animal, or coyotes, they tend to, their feet tend to skew outward slightly. And so, and then the other thing is that same kind of, those same rules about a bobcat track apply where you know they have a leading toe and um and so like this foot right here we can't see all of it but the heel pad will tend to droop to the outside and these three toes will tend to be in line with each other versus that one on the inside but we have a hind kind of stepping on top of it there the other thing is really if you stand back if you stand back at the you know, very back and, and try to pick out the whole trail mm -hmm. you really can start seeing like like this one is pointed this way right and then this one and then this one back on this side and then this one and i mean it's it's, it's subtle but there is a distinct kind of um uh, side of body that's showing and so you said it was the left no, you right said right right yeah so that little droop on there is also indicating Right. Right side. Yeah. Just that little, little Yeah, X, and, and this little thing right so, there. So on the outside oh. of the track there, yeah. of this being a right foot, that'll droop out a little bit. Right. And that's harder to see on that left hand. Yeah. So. Yeah. Rob, what are you working on? Are you, are you uh, I was measuring? challenged by the gate. Okay. And, uh, so just looking at the measurements, and it's on the low side of the truck, of direct registry truck. Okay. Yeah. 
So you were you were thinking I a walk and but, yeah. but I'm I'm here because that's my Achilles tendon. It's the gait. <laughs> it's the gait. Yeah. And, and long legged. Well, you know that's the problem is human gaits are pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, touche. Touche. Well, yeah, it's a, well, your coyotes are probably larger too where you're living at than these here. Uh, slightly. Slightly. But I mean, really, the bipedal things. I mean, it's just a walk. It's a skip or a run. Uh, and 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 animals with four legs, they don't run unless they stand up on their hind two legs. Um, so uh, 